Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what part of the world you are in. This is the Big Girl Diary. Celebrity mess. Look. <laughs> I got a good one for you today. No, it's not about Amber Heard. It's about Jesse Smollett. He was the one who said that he was attacked by two white guys in Chicago, a noose around his neck, beat up, uh, made some remarks about his sexuality and called him some racial epithets. Then once the LGBTQ came out, surrounded around him. The Democratic Party was surrounding around him and, and, and protecting him. And as the story went on, black people were like, the black guys were like, uh-uh, something isn't right there. And as time went on, his story started falling apart. The LGBTQ left him. The Democratic Party was like, well, we need to rethink this. And he was there by himself. And who was crucified? He started crucifying black folks for not supporting him. Like I said in the video, um, when have you embraced the black community? You haven't. When you came out, you came out as a black Tupac. Not the black Tupac, I'm sorry the gay Tupac and you had nothing to do with the black community. Now that he went to jail, had he spent six days in a psych ward and that reformed him. But I'll let you hear him, his story. Jesse Smollett is opening up about life after his conviction. This week, the former Empire star sat down with SiriusXM's Sway Calloway for a wide-ranging conversation, including getting candid about his legal troubles. In December 2021, the actor was convicted on five felony counts of disorderly conduct after being accused of faking a hate crime against himself. In March, he was sentenced to 150 days in jail, but was released on bond while his case is on appeal. There's a part of me that, you know, when I strip my, when I strip my ego, when I strip my, my personal emotions about it and my personal situation, I'm the way that it was served to everybody. I absolutely understand why people felt betrayed, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I put that in my song, thank you God, where I was just like, I really overstand the reason why y'all felt betrayed. I do hold some people accountable for the things that they said, for the things that they did, for the ways that they reacted, because half of those people should have picked up the mm -hmm. phone and called me mm -hmm. because they had my number, you know, mm -hmm. and they didn't. But I also understand that we sometimes operate off of fear and that when you're, when you're kind of, you know, the whole mission is to alienate you so that everybody, so that you are such you are so just like vibrating in the wrong way and like all the around you is just wrong that people just have to step back. Now, Smollett says he gained clarity over his six and a half days in the prison's psych ward by fasting. I was fasting because... He said a lot. He said an awful lot. I want to feel bad for Jesse. I do. But I don't. He brought it all on himself. <laughs> he took people down with him. He's getting sued. He made Taraji P. Hinton look bad. She's out there batting for him. Because. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there. He, he did a lot. He did a lot. But 
when he went to the psych ward, he fasts. He said he had some time to think about it and to look at the big mess that he made. And here's the interesting part. It was all about money. The money that he felt that he should have made off of, um, uh, off of empire. All of that. Now, what I uh, find interesting is now he is starting to reach out to the black community. And look, one thing I'll tell you is this, is if you don't nurture something, you can't expect to get something out of nothing. If you put nothing here, you can't expect to get something out of nothing, Jesse. And I'm glad you understand that. But um, he did six days in jail, and I mean, in the psych ward, and doing better. Now that some time has passed, and he can reflect and do better. So I just want to give an update on the Jess Jesse Jesse Smollett. Now, Smollett says he gained clarity over his six and a half days in the prison's psych ward by fasting. I was fasting because that's what we do in my family, like we fast for, for clarity, for I have never in my life, at least in my adult life, been as clear of mind as I was for those six and a half days. The former Empire actor also explained what it was like inside his cell, telling Calloway he wasn't restrained while in the psych ward. He also took time to thank the staff inside while he was under their watch. They didn't have me in a jacket, but they had me. I was sleeping on a, on like a, like a restraint bed. Mm -hmm. I wasn't restrained. And I have to keep it real. Everybody, you know, um, uh, uh, was inside, was very kind. And when I left, I thanked them all. I said, I don't know what y'all think either way, but the fact that you didn't let me know what you think either way, and you just showed me respect, I'm grateful for. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not shy to say that I am in therapy, mm -hmm. as we all should be, because a lot of stuff that happened over the last three years, obviously, but also just, you know, just life stuff. Yeah. You know, you yeah. gotta, you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to train your mind and not just train your body, uh -huh. you know, to, to be healthy and to be, to be beautiful. Prior to his arrest, Smollett made headlines in February of 2019 for a Good Morning America interview with Robin Roberts, in which he gave an account of his alleged hate crime attack. At the time of the interview, Smollett's claims were still considered credible by police. But now the actor says he regrets ever talking to Roberts. I don't want to get too deep, you know, because I, I love and respect Robin Roberts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I did not want to do that interview. That interview wasn't for me. That was for my character. You know, I hadn't watched the interview at all. Uh, I hadn't watched the interview at all until we were on trial. <laughs> okay. <sighs> he acts like that he doesn't have any agency at all. Like he can't say no. You can say no. I don't want to do the uh, the interview. So, still, I think he's still holding on to not taking full accountability for his lies. But let's continue. And I had to watch it because they were trying to use the interview as evidence of lies or whatever. Um, so I had to watch it and I watched it and I was mortified. Uh -huh. I mean, I was mortified. I mean, I cringed at just the, every single word that I said in that interview was the truth. But there was a certain level of performative uh -huh. nature that came from it because I didn't want to be there. And I was so angry and so offended that I had to go on national television and explain something that happened to me and it was so political and it was all of those things and i found myself i found myself dealing with my own internalized homophobia okay as an openly gay black man who leads with his blackness i found myself dealing with that and i'm embarrassed and i'm mm -hmm. a little bit ashamed to say that meaning that i wanted to i wanted to represent all of us that had been assaulted based on who we are um 
but for the people that didn't have the platform that I had. I mm -hmm. wanted to say all of the things that people should. Okay, look, look. <sighs> he wasn't assaulted. He made that up. That was a lie. He. That was a lie. He said that two white guys attacked him. Turned out to be two dark-skinned Nigerian guys that were brothers and one he had a relationship with. Still not telling the truth. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very disappointed in Jesse. Disappointed in him. I thought he was going to be truthful and to say, yes, I made all this up. But no, he's still holding on to that. I'm through. I'm done with him. Yeah, I'm upset. What is interesting about these Hollywood types is they have something called their uh, something called their truth. It normally doesn't have anything to do with the truth. What actually happened? It just happens to be their truth, and how they perceived it happened. Very interesting how they can. Disassociate, disassociate themselves and then put in what they perceived what happened to be. Jesse Smollett, that's exactly what he's doing, telling his truth, not the truth, in my opinion. In conversation, including getting candid about his legal troubles. In December 2021, the actor was convicted on five felony counts of disorderly conduct after being accused of faking a hate crime against himself. In March, he was sentenced to 150 days in jail. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. All right, so Jesse Smollett, this happened about three, four years ago. And from what it looks like, he's in therapy. He's looking at himself. But I don't think he's really ready to take full responsibility for the hoax. The lies he put out there, the two brothers, the two Nigerian guys that caught up in his mess and his inability to still take responsibility for what he did and dragging the LGBTQ. And I found it quite interesting how he said that he leads with his blackness. I've never seen it. I have always seen him lead with him being a part of the LGBTQ community. Never have I seen him lead with his color. He always led with his sexuality. So I, I, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm just saying, I don't know what he's talking about. I haven't seen it. It was always, he led with his sexuality and color did not come out, not until he, when all his lives start falling apart and everybody left him and then he tried to come up with the black community. I don't like being people's whipping boy when all else fails, all of a sudden then we're important. No, you can keep it. But I'm glad he's getting help. And that was my first celebrity mess, was Jesse Smollett, because it was messy, messy. Messy, messy, messy. Okay, on that note, please like, subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers. I'm close. I'm trying to get there. And leave a comment. If you think I'm wrong, if you think that I'm being too hard on Jesse Smollett and I should be a little nicer, put something down there. If you think I'm totally right for me taking the stance that I'm taking, put something down there. And please like, subscribe, or dislike, subscribe, dislike, and tell me whatever. <laughs> and I want to thank all of you, all of you. Thank you for stopping by.